Hello and welcome back to my studio. My name is Kimberly Hilton and today I'm sharing with you the second part to this video series where I'm showing you how to paint a sunlit landscape of a forest scene with um, fall colors. And I'm just going to leave this um, painting here as, as a reference for me and also for you. Um, and I went ahead and did the background for this painting and now it's completely dry. I showed that in the um, first video and if you missed it you'll want to be sure to go back and rewatch that and I'll leave the link in the description below. And um, with that I'll just go over a few of the materials that we're going to be using and then we'll get started. So um, I'm going to use two sizes of tape and um, I'm just going to show you an easy way to mask off your trees and uh, the horizon so you know we won't have to worry about um, paint showing through the trees and you don't have to do this step if you, if you know what you're doing um, but this just makes it easier um, this just makes it easier for beginners so um, I'll just leave that there and then I'm using three colors I'm using ultramarine blue yellow ochre and burnt sienna and I will be using a round brush this is a number 12 round by Skoda this is a um, three-quarter inch flat brush I may or may not use it and um, you'll need either a rigger brush or a liner brush just something small for uh, details for tree branches and um, a store card or um, the back of a paintbrush or a palette knife to scrape texture into tree bark so um, I think that's about everything you will need a rag to um, to you know dip your paintbrush on to dry it and that's a about it I think if there's anything else then I'll let you know but with that we're ready to get started and um, the first thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to tape off a horizon line and I want my horizon line to be kind of low um, in that bottom part of the painting so I'm just going to do, do stretch this tape across and that's going to save this bottom section and then um, then what I'm going to do is uh, this is going to cover the lake area so we don't get um, paint on the lake and then I'm going to take this thicker tape and I'm going to put it just um, where I want the big oak tree to be and um, it doesn't have to go all the way up we're just going to block out where the mountain's going to be and I'm going to um, make it about that wide that's about the width of two fingers and then um, for the next tree it's going to be further in the distance so I want the trunk to be smaller so I'm just going to use this smaller washi tape and I'm going to just block out um, right there and um, I think that's all I'm going to do f for now and um, now it's time to start painting So I'm going to take my uh, round brush and I'm just going to wet it with water, dab off the excess and I'm going to dip into this paint. Actually I need to re-wet this paint a little bit because it's dried a little from earlier. So I'm just put a little water in there. And we're going to only be using these three colors to mix all the colors that we need. But for the mountain colors, I want to mix up a light gray, like a blue gray. So I'm going to take 
the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue and I'm going to just mix up a, um, a grayish um, color of a really like wet juicy wash and when I get like a nice blue gray color that I think um, you know almost like a maybe a really wet Payne's gray color um, that's about what we're looking for and if you want you can I don't know I don't want to do it no I don't want to do that so that made it kind of a green gray and I'm not ready for that yet but we'll use that later so I'm just gonna rinse out my brush dab it on the paper towel and then I'm gonna pick up this um, grayish color here and I'm going to start at this section here and then I'm just gonna make some like wavy zigzag kind of lines um, across the page and that's going to be my mountains and I'll show you how to um, how to lift out some of these little highlights so um, let's go and our tape we don't have to worry too much because the tape is going to protect the areas that we don't want paint on so I'm just going to go up you can make your mountains as high as you want I'm just going to make some kind of low mountains and I'm just going to just paint. And uh, the cool thing about having the underpainting is the colors from the underpainting kind of show through and it's going to give, um, it's going to put the, the highlights where they need to be for our, um, our mountains when we go to lift them off and um, so just continue going across the page and you see where um, the mountains are hitting this blue side um, they look cooler and over here where they're on this warm side they look warmer and um, your mountains may look different than my mountains that's okay because um, you know all mountains look kind of different and I live in um, the Appalachian Mountains um, and they are old and worn down they're um, I've heard them called the Granny Mountains so they're kind of worn down and uh, so they have gentle slopes and you can take your paintbrush and just dip it in water dab off the excess and then just kind of go by where you think the sun would be hitting your mountains and um, just lift out a few little we're just we're just spreading the paint around a little bit and lifting a little paint so you can just lift dab and lift the highlights are going to be on the sunny part of the mountains so and where where the underpainting is the highlights are warmer than where the um, where the um, cooler side of the painting is so that's kind of you know what we're gonna do for there you can do it however you want to and um, it's good to let this dry um, so the colors don't bleed into one another so I'm just gonna um, quickly take a hair dryer to this okay so um, this is dry it didn't take very long. I'm just going to remove the tape now. I see a little bit of wet paint underneath that tape. That's okay because we're going to cover it with a tree. And now um, we're going to pull off the tape at the horizon. And just 
tosser tapes in place. And the next step we're going to do is we're going to start painting our trees. And um, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the mountain. We're going to use the same colors. So I'm going to take, well actually, I like to use the yellow ochre on the warm side of the tree, like where the sun, nearest the sun. So on this small tree it's going to be on the um, right hand side and on the bigger tree it's going to be on the left hand side so um, what I'm going to do is just get a wet wet wash and I'm going to for this tree I want this tree to go from the bottom of the page to the top of the page and it's going to start out a little bit thicker and then it's going to get a little more narrow as it goes to the top because um, trees are not telephone poles and they um, they kind of taper as they grow up so this is a big oak tree and I just I'm just gonna go from the bottom and I'm gonna try to line it up with that mountain there and I'm gonna go up to the top and then on on this side and it's okay if you use the yellow ochre I'm just gonna you see how I tapered it on um, near the top and then I'm just going to paint this area in. You can make your tree as wide as you think it needs to be. I'm just going to paint this area in with, um, with the yellow ochre and so it's wet and now I'm going to mix up some um, blue and burnt sienna to make that gray color again and I'm just gonna go either from the top or the bottom it doesn't matter and I'm just gonna let on on this farther side away from the Sun and I'm just gonna let the colors blend into to one another um, where it's wet they're just gonna the colors are just gonna blend out now um, I know a lot of people um, tend to, and I, I've been guilty of this too, but tend to want to paint trees brown, but I live in a forest and when I look at the trees, um, unless they're in a shade or unless maybe there's some kind of pine tree or something, they don't really look brown to me. They look more, they look more um, gray or sometimes they look a little more blue gray or maybe a little more warm gray so um, so I like to paint paint them gray how I see them unless they're like in in a lot of shadow now we will as this gets drier we can go back in and make this side darker we want this side to be darker because it's going to be in shadow so we're just going to keep adding to this side but not to this side and then um, when you're ready you can take your paintbrush and just wherever you want a branch to be you can press down and just I'll wiggle my paintbrush a little here and there just however you want and you can do like angles and stuff like that and that kind of makes a um, branch and your branches can be as thick as you want and then go narrow and usually usually tree branches um, they kind of go out and then they'll branch off into like shapes of a Y I think and um, so you can just add extra ones and then wiggle them a little bit so that they look kind of like more natural and then you'll darken the um, underside because that's where the shadow is going to be and that's going to give your tree more shape and um, so that's one branch and um, you can put more branches wherever you want them and I'm going to take one and just wiggle it kind of up and go off the picture plane and then I'm gonna do another branch 
sticking out and um, sometimes it's good not to put too many branches or at least leave gaps because you're going to want to put some uh, leaves on your trees and if if um, the leaves probably won't cover up where the branches are so um, it's good to leave openings for your leaves so um, before we get too many uh, branches I want to show you how we're going to make our leaves and I forgot to tell you this part um, I like to use a sponge to um, dab in the leaves and I think it makes nice uh, foliage textures so what you're gonna do is just this is just a like I think a natural sponge from Hobby Lobby it comes in different shapes and um, I just tear it to make it smaller and um, I'm gonna dip it in clean water it's just to wet it a little bit and dab it off and then I'm gonna dip into some of this yellow ochre paint and I'm gonna put it you know dab it on where I think um, I want my golden highlights for the foliage and um, maybe even put some down here and uh, you know there's also branches in front of the tree so you can put it over the tree trunks too and um, they're gonna be some behind it and just uh, just dab it on wherever you think you want your um, leaves to be and you can come over towards your sun area if you want to your tree can as, be as big as you want it and um, so since I got that um, some of the yellow in I'm gonna go and grab some of this orange burnt sienna color and I'm just going to dab it in over the yellow. Sometimes it's good to turn your sponge around so your um, leaf shapes um, don't all look the same and you can even and you can take your paintbrush and you can uh, make textures with it too but um, I'm just trying I'm trying to work fast to show you um, but I want to show you how we're going to get our texture into our tree before the tree dries so um, this is still damp but it's not completely wet and what I'm going to do now where you want your leaves to be you don't want to put the texture but um, I'm going to take the back of this card and I'm just going to scrape some um, some lines into the paint just a little and this is gonna um, make it look like more like tree bark because oak trees have kind of a rough bark and um, when we paint over this tree later too this this texture is gonna show through If it's dry, it's not going to really work. So those branches are kind of already dry. So. But um, there's how you do that. And you do, you do want to do it while it's still a little bit damp. And I'm not going to put texture in this tree because this tree is going to be farther away. And I don't want the texture there. So now I'm going to dip into... Um, I'm going to mix some of that blue into some of that yellow and kind of get a greenish color. And I'm going to dab in a little bit here and there on this tree. Let's see. It might be better for you to wait till your tree is dry before you go and do, do the foliage because you see where I didn't weigh it's kind of um, bleeding bleeding into the tree trunk 
but I want to try to work quick so this video is not too long and I just want to give you an idea of what to do and uh, this time of year there's um, a lot of colors in the, the trees they're you know yellows and still some green and some oranges so um, I love this color combination I think it's uh, a, a really pretty um, combination for getting the fall foliage and I think that anybody can do this project and I, at least I hope you can and if you try and it doesn't quite turn out right the first time try it again um, practice makes um, progress right so um, I've painted the same scene several times so I, I kind of already worked out what to do and I kind of did the work for you so um, I hope you you all will enjoy this and if you do please please leave me a comment below or a like and um, consider subscribing um, I plan on making more videos so, um, I got some foliage on and now I'm going to, um, add some more branches because right now it looks like the foliage is just floating in some places. So, um, we're going to do a little negative painting and that's just, um, that we're painting around what we already painted kind of so I'm gonna put in a branch there that leads to that and if you go into your wet paint it's gonna spread out sometimes that's good and sometimes that might not be what you want but um, I'm just uh, trying to work fast like I said Oak trees have um, sometimes have little little smaller branches that grow out from the sods. But um, I'm gonna have to wait and let this dry a little bit more because because um, I can see that the um, the lines that I'm making is um, kind of you know fuzzing out a little bit and I don't really want that right now not with this tree so and that's because this paint is still wet so that tells me that it's time to move on to um, this tree where it's dry over here and um, I'm gonna do it a little bit different for this tree I'm gonna go ahead and and dab on the foliage and I'm gonna just mix up some um, some color here Let's see I want a little bit softer colors for this dark tree and I'm just gonna dab it in I mean for this lighter tree I'm just gonna dab them in and uh, Okay, and then I'm going to take some more of the orange color and dab it where I'm dabbing into the wet paint. I, I believe that's too orange. <laughs> so let's try to tone that down. I just dipped into the water and now I'm going to lift some of that color out. I'm going to paint these leaves in first so that I can just paint my tree trunk around it. And now I need more ultramarine blue because I've used all my up and this is some I mixed up earlier so I'll go ahead and uh, pull some of this out. Okay. 
gonna mix some ray green color and dab into this tree. And I can add some more to this one. And then you can even go in and add some blue in the shadow areas. And the blue will show up over the tree bark, so. I don't want to do too much of that. Maybe here, just a little here and there. And some there. And uh, maybe just dab a little tiny bit here. Okay, so that's um, that's all I'm going to do with that for the moment, and um, right now I guess I'll mix up uh, the gray color for this distant tree, and this one can be a little... Um, Um, lighter so and uh, farther up we're not this one comes down the page and off the page but this one is gonna stop um, somewhere up here and I'm just gonna paint that in and I'm gonna make it a little bit wider at the base and if you want it to look like you know it's growing in the ground you can kind of spread it out a little bit and make it look like a trunk. I forgot that I wanted to make the side closest to the sun have a little bit of that orange glow so I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in and you see how it just spreads and kind of pushes away um, pushes into that gray area and we're not gonna put texture on this one But um, just imagine where the branches are and the branches, um, you know, on the sunny side, you can put some of them with that warmer color and um, I'm going to try to paint around my leaf shapes, but I probably should wait to let it dry. So um, this is kind of negative painting. I'm going to just try to get up here. And um, you all should probably wait until your um, your leaves have dried before you move on to this part. But I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to work around those leaves. If you if you want to try it, just go for it. It doesn't matter. Um, this is this is learning, and even if if it doesn't turn out exactly the way you want it, you will know what to do better next time. I think it looks too small up here, so I'm going to make it wider.
wiggle your branches up to your foliage. So, you know, they have something supporting them. You can put the golden ochre color. It's not golden ochre, it's just regular ochre, but I think it's like has a golden color to it. If your tree looks wonky, it's okay because I know a lot of wonky trees. And this one does look a little bit wonky right now, but I'll, I'll fix that. Some of your um, branches may, may not have foliage on it. You don't have to put foliage on all the branches because trees, you know, just go outside and look at a tree and see what, how it's growing and um, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, a lot of times there's even twigs that stick out past the foliage. Especially this time of year when the leaves are starting to fall. Just testing to see if that's getting any drier. And um, I'm going to go back in and darken the shadow side of this tree. That's going to make it stand out more. And I'm going to kind of try to just carve out my leaves there and paint around them a little bit. Darken the shadow side of the branches and just imagine where the sun is hitting the tree and um, where the shadows are. You can put some, see that's bleeding out, so that's still wet. So you can put some branches over top of the leaves that you already painted, and then um, you can put some under. You can see where the tree is drier in some areas um, because then it's leaving more marks. So I'm just kind of painting in a like up and down motion here. If um, if it's too dark and you want to lighten up, just Take your paintbrush, wet it, and then just blend, like lift the paint with your paintbrush like I'm doing here. Kind of just dab up where you want it to be or blend it out wherever you, you want your blend to be. Because a, a tree is round and the shadow is, gonna, is not going to be real sharp. It's going to be rounded. So just move the paint around however you want it. That branch needs a little help. And uh, what's this? Okay. That, that branch had to have um, something, some twigs to support it. And... Um, this one does too. I think uh, drawing trees is fun and I could sit here f for a long time and just play around with this tree till I got it the way I wanted it. 
I enjoy I enjoy drawing trees. Um, it's, it's therapeutic for me. And uh, this one needs some darkening and maybe we'll do that and that one needs to figure out where it's going. Oh, and you can switch to a smaller brush, but this um, this brush is pretty, this round brush is a number 12, but it has a sharp tip, so you can get some fine textures with that. That's why I like using it. Some round brushes like this Da Vinci um, Casaneo, I think, I don't know how you say that, but um, is more round, so you're not going to get the fine lines with it as easy as you would with a pointed one. This is a pointed Princeton Aqua Elite and um, you, it's pretty good but I like the, I actually like the Skoda better. So I'm just going to dip into that color again and I'm just going to look around and see where I think a branch needs to be. Um, that one's not that pretty so I'll have some going off the page and some goes down and uh, I don't know I think I'm going to go back into this other tree now let that one sit for a minute and we'll see now we'll go back in here and just add a few this one's not going to be as detailed as the other one because it's farther away and you can't really see the details Okay, so I don't want to spend too much time on these trees because I don't want this video to be too long. But you can sit and play with your tree for as long as you want. And I may come back and work on work on it some more later. But um, now let's go on to um, this lake area. And um, what I'm going to do is just take this, um, well, let's see, maybe I'll take this flat brush and I'm going to mix in some more of that gray blue color and then I'm just go going to kind of go across in horizontal lines. I don't want to cover up all this pretty um, sky because the sky is reflecting onto the lake and it's kind of like a mirror image almost. So I'm just going to go across and I'm going to try to miss my tree and like a little Kind of just ripples and then you can do like some zigzags and they get farther apart as they get closer to the um, closer to you they're closer together in the distance Try 
try to just go around your um, your tree. We're gonna have um, uh, some some river bank or grasses along the sides here, so um, we don't have to go too far. And um, I don't want to do too much, so I'm just going to maybe leave it at that. I like the reflection, and I think, I think that looks nice. And I did a little bit of dragging there, so some of the paint didn't completely cover there, and it looks kind of, I don't know. But um, let's make that go off the page a little bit. Okay. Now... That I did that I'm going to mix up a blue green color kind of gray blue green color and that's going to to go on this side where this tree is and I'm just gonna try to paint around the tree and I'm gonna go in at an angle and paint paint down and then just paint around the the roots there and then up in there and We'll have this bank go out in front of the, the tree a little bit. And then just go down and however you, you think that's, that looks nice. And then um, for the nearer Part of this you don't want it to be a little bit of a um, maybe a warmer green so it looks closer and, and darker colors and I'm just going to um, try to paint around that tree and maybe I'll even go up farther do this side and where that underpainting is on this side it's gonna look um, it's already gonna look darker then you can um, go back in and add some of the burnt sienna to warm things up and just make it look more um, in, uh, warmer <laughs> and then you can pull some grasses up just kind of drag it would probably help at this point to let this dry because it's blending in to each other right now but to pull up the grasses you kind of want to do it while it's wet you can tilt your brush or you can take and just dab your brush <laughs> kind of like a octopus or something and then you know you got more irregular lines and you can just drag drag up now um, after this dries you'll be able to go back in and get um, some darker darker patches and stuff like um, You don't want to cover all of it up, but, you know, just something like that. And then you can go back in with more of the burnt sienna. And, um, you know, we're not using as um, liquidy 
washes as we were we're using kind of like thicker paint and I'm spreading my bristles out and just just putting some texture in here because you know there's lots of weeds and grasses that grows along the um, the banks of rivers and stuff unless somebody's mowed the grass and you can go back in and put a kind of lighter color down on this one. I'm going to get some more yellow ochre. This is a uh, wash I already made up. It's kind of So I don't really like that, so I'm just going to kind of lift some of it off and maybe I'll take a bit of a paper towel and just dab off some of that because um, I don't like it. So I know a lot of people are intimidated by watercolor because they think you can't remove a mistake if you make a mistake, but that just goes to show you that you can. Um, now um, I'm going to use this. Just imagine where the sun would be hitting. And I want some, some blues. When you mix the blues with the yellow ochre, you're going to get more greens. can add some some of that warm color and just press it in some places because um, chances are there's going to be a lot of um, leaves from the trees that have fallen and just make some random marks and textures And now um, I'm going to take this liner brush and I'm going to go in and um, just drag up some um, some weeds, water weeds, or some kind of just stuff growing. You want to put some, make some yellow ochre ones. Those would be catching the sun and um, just do different ones. Then you can take your paintbrush and dot, 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 and that will look kind of like seed heads. And you can um, make some, you know, more red. And 
doing some with the yellow ochre. I'm just dabbing in some different textures. There's all kinds of stuff growing here. And then we might lift some some little um, branches up. If you want to take the back of the card while this is still wet, you could scratch some um, grass textures in as well. You don't want to dig too deep and you don't want to overdo it. But um, that's just a way to get some extra little textures in and um, so uh, let's see if there's anything else I want to do with this before um, I stop the video. So I might now that this has had a little bit of time to dry, go back in and add a little more. Um, my, my water cups are getting really dirty, so I should change those. But I'm just going to dab in um, more of um, this burnt sienna to this tree in a few places. Um, too much on that one. Um, you can take the sponge and you could also press in some more um, just random stuff in the foreground there and um, Maybe with the blue color, do a little bit on that one. And um, I think I'm about to call this done, at least for now. And once it's dry, I might come back in and do a few more details. And you're welcome to do as many details as you want to your, your painting, but I... I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of get ready to finish it up. Um, oh, I, want, I did want to show you one other way to create some textures. And um, we'll need to cover, get something like a paper towel and uh, cover the sky area because you don't really want to do too much where your sun is. And I'm going to just cover that and maybe maybe the water area. And now I'm going to take a paintbrush um, and I'm going to dip it into some some of the paint and I'm going to take it and I'm just going to tap it against my fingers and it's going to um, leave some like little little drips and um, like little textures. It could be like acorns or um, I don't know just random 
random things, random seed pods or something. And um, if you want to do some different colors, you can dip into like your, your blue color. That's not wet enough, so I need to add a little bit of water. Okay, so you can just dip. You can splatter into your grasses if you want to. Splatter on this side. Um, that gives it some random textures that you probably couldn't get in if you painted them in. So, so um, that's about it. Oops. Let's see. I'm trying to decide. Okay. If any of them are too dark, you can just dab them out. But um, that's about all I'm going to do for now. Welcome back. Um, I wanted to come back after this had a chance to dry so I could remove the tape and show you um, the final painting. But as, um, as I was inspecting it, I noticed a few things that I forgot. Um, just a few minor details. I forgot to put a shadow here. I realized that there would be a shadow off of this tree and um, so I'm just going to add that in and uh, I think maybe, I don't know if I'll do anything else, but I just wanted to do that real quick because it's, um, it's bugging me. <laughs> So um, then I'll remove the tape. And this is just, just gonna be very quick and easy. So I'm just gonna mix some of this old paint that's dried on the palette. And uh, you see this kind of gray blue color. We've, we've mixed up a lot of this color by now and I'm gonna get a little, just a little more blue. And I'm just going to uh, imagine, see where the sun is. So the light's probably gonna be coming this way and I'm just going to put a shadow up to the tree trunk and go out and uh, that's that's about all I'm going to do there just soften it just a little and that's just going to make it look more realistic and uh if your um, if your tree needs darkening anywhere, you can go in and uh, just do a few little touch-ups. With watercolor painting, um, a lot of times it's not just uh, one and done. You have to go back in uh, once it it dries because it dries a lot lighter. Um, you'll learn as you go. But um, I think that's it, unless we wanted to put a little life in this painting, uh, we might want to add a bird. <laughs> so uh, that's a common thing to do. So let's see, where do we want our bird? Maybe we'll put a bird flying up here. And all I'm going to do is like a, um, a kind of M, a M shape, but with, with the... Um, with the M's like spread out. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to go. So there's a, a little, a little bird. And, um, if, if you don't like your bird, <laughs> if you, put, if you put a bird in and you don't like it, you can take a paper towel And you can just dip with water and just rub it off. Be careful, be careful with that because sometimes it doesn't always work. But um, depending on how staining your paints are, but these paints that I've used today aren't very staining. And if, 
if there's still a little a little shadow of that bird left behind you can always just bring out a leaf or, or a um, little tree branch so I'm going to try to make a better bird but I'm going to do it like that maybe and let's add another one teeny tiny one there and uh, oh and before I forget it's good to sign your painting so take a um, Take either a very thin liner brush or um, a calligraphy brush. I use that sometimes or a thin liner brush, but that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to take this um, pencil, or it's not a pencil, it's a watercolor brush that I, um, I clipped off the end of it. It's, um, it was a brush like this, um, a Simply Simmons, um, number eight round that I, I shortened for a travel brush that would fit, you know, more easily into my palette. So I just, um, took some, um, what are they called? It's, um, wire cutters, I think and cut off the end and then I took a pencil sharpener and then sharpened it till it had like a little point there. And I use this, um, you can use it to scrape in textures, but you can also use it to, um, uh, to write with. So what I'm gonna do is just kinda mix up a color that I want to sign my name with. And I'm gonna dip saturate the end of it and then it works kind of like a pencil and you can just oh that's not wet enough For some reason, it's not working too good today. It's um, taking a minute to get saturated with the paint. Oops. Once it gets going, it works better. You might want to practice this um, on a different piece of paper until um, you get the hang of it and you get it um, saturated enough with paint to, um, to write with. But, um, It's mom's working better now, so. My name is Kimberly Hilton, and Hilton is spelled with a Y um, instead of an I. So, um, that's it. 
sometimes it's easier to you use this technique than um, trying to paint with a brush so um, I hope you enjoyed this video um, if you did let me know in the comments and like the video uh, and subscribe to my channel and I will be making more videos um, and um, I hope you have great success and um, if you try if you try this technique and you um, you like it let me know um, how everything works out now I'm gonna do the big reveal and I do caution you to always wait till your painting is dry before you remove your tape because if you don't it's easier to rip your paper that way um, I didn't do very much painting today and I wasn't um, near the tape so um, I figured it would be safe to go ahead and do the removal and always pull away from your painting if you if you have a rip it will um, rip this part and not this part if um, if your tape is sticking too much and it's in danger of ripping then you can take a hair dryer and just heat up the tape a little bit and it will remove easier so um, there is the finished painting I think it's beautiful I hope you do too and I hope um, I hope you have success and thanks so much thanks for watching and have a great day bye